Hi, I'm Max Dawson. Thank you for watching this video about the Bible. In our last session, we learned that the Bible is not a bunch of disconnected stories. Rather, there is one story that runs throughout the entire Bible. That story begins with the three promises made to Abraham. Let me read the three promises from Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1, 2, and 3. Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. The three promises then are a land promise, a nation promise, and a blessing promise. Later, in Genesis 22:18, God repeats this third promise and uses the word seed. That's why we sometimes call the third promise the seed promise. The seed promise is about the coming of Jesus Christ into the world. Now let's talk about the fulfillment of one of those promises. We're going to begin where God began with the nation promise. Now we might think that God would fulfill the land promise first, but he did not because as yet there was no nation to occupy that land. He had to begin by building a nation of people who would inherit the land. Now remember, all of this is supposed to happen through Abraham's family, that is, through his offspring. But when God made these promises to him, Abraham had no children. Abraham has to have a son through whom the promises could be fulfilled. And consider this, that when God made the promises to him, Abraham was already 75 years old and his wife Sarah was 65 years old. It doesn't look like there's much chance of having a son, does it? Now, if that's what you're thinking, well, that's what Abraham was thinking too. So Abraham looks around and realizes that he has a servant who was born in his house. Maybe the promise will come through his servant. But God says the child will come from Abraham's own body. Now, at this point, Sarah gives her handmaid, Hagar, to Abraham, thinking that Hagar can bear a son who will fulfill the promise. And so a boy named Ishmael is born to Abraham and Hagar. Again, God says, no, this is not the son who will fulfill the promise of a great nation. God says the son will come from Sarah, Abraham's wife. And indeed, that's what happened. After 25 years of waiting, when Abraham was 100 years old and Sarah was 90, Sarah gave birth to Isaac, the son of promise. From Isaac would come the great nation that God had promised. When Isaac grew to manhood, he married a woman named Rebekah. Isaac and Rebekah had twin sons, Jacob and Esau. And God chose Jacob as the son of promise through whom he would build the great nation. When Jacob grew into adulthood, he married and had children. He became the father of 12 sons. At about this time, God changed Jacob's name to Israel. Jacob, or Israel, now had 12 sons. These 12 sons became the heads of 12 families that are otherwise known as the 12 tribes of Israel. They are the 12 families that came from Jacob whose name had been changed to Israel. Now remember, God is building a great nation out of Abraham's family. These 12 tribes will be the nucleus of this nation, the nation of Israel. Now lots of things happen in the early history of this nation that are important to the Bible story. One of the sons of Jacob, Joseph was his name, was sold into slavery by Jacob's other sons. Joseph was enslaved down in Egypt, but God was with him. Joseph eventually became a powerful leader in Egypt, and when a terrible famine struck Jacob's family that lived up in Canaan, the whole family was forced to go down to Egypt to flee from the famine. There was plenty of food in Egypt, and their brother Joseph was in charge of the food. Rather than seeking revenge because of what his brothers had done to him, Joseph treated them with kindness and generosity. And so the whole family stayed in Egypt for a long time. They became great in number. Their number was about 75 when they went down to Egypt. But over a period of 400 years, they had grown to as many as 2 million. This was the great nation that God had promised Abraham. But they did not have their own land the land promised to them by God. In fact, one of the pharaohs in Egypt turned against them and made them slaves in Egypt. While God had made them into a great nation, a great people, they had no land, and the prospects did not look good. 
What would God do to fulfill the land promise to Abraham's family? We're going to see that in our next session.